In this lecture, we will learn about the ATP synthase structure. The structure of ATP synthase. So, what is ATP synthase? ATP synthase is basically the complex five, also known as the complex five. ATP synthase is present inside the inner mitochondrial membrane, right? So, mitochondria has the outer membrane and the inner membrane, and the space between the outer membrane and inner membrane is known as intermembrane space. So, ATP synthase, also known as complex five, is present inside the inner mitochondrial membrane, is embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane. So, complex five, this ATP synthase is present along with electron transport chain. It will be always present with the electron transport chain as the electron transport chain consists of four complexes as it, uh, these structures are for the electron transport chain as electron transport chain has four complexes complex one two three and four and uh, the electron transport chain has the two carriers coenzyme q and the cytochrome c so electron transport chain uh, there, there is the transfer of electrons right from the different oxidation processes like nadh transfers electrons to complex one and FADA transfers electrons to complex two, right? And from there, they are carried to the complex three and from complex three to complex four. And at complex four, there is the oxygen that is the final acceptor for the electrons. And there is the final formation of the water. The end product is the water molecule. And the final acceptor for the electron is the oxygen. So the electron transport chain in which the electrons are transported to a series of carriers and as a result, the energy generated is used to pump the protons from the matrix, from the matrix to the intermembranous space. And these protons are collected in the intermembranous space. That will develop the proton gradient, right? It will develop the proton gradient that the positive charge will develop here and the negative charge will develop here. Then as a result, what will happen, these protons will be again entered into the matrix. And these protons are driven, uh, are again uh, entered into the matrix by this complex part, ATP synthesis, right? So these four complexes like electron transport chain is involved in the pumping of these protons into the intermembranous space, right? While they enter again into the matrix to this ATP synthase. While they are entering to the ATP synthase, the energy is used to rotate this ATP synthase. There will be the conformation changes of ATP synthase and that results in the synthesis of ATP, right? So in the ATP synthesis, as it synthesizes the ATP, there is the synthesis of ATP from ADP. It causes the, this complex, causes the phosphorylation of the ADP into ADP. That the phosphate will attach, you know, then phosphate will attach to ADP and will be converted into ATP, right? So in this process, in this step, phosphorylation takes place and in this electron transport chain, oxidation takes place. So that's why this whole process together, this uh, this whole process, this process is known as oxidation and this ATP synthase is known as phosphorylation. So that's why this whole process is known as oxidative phosphorylation. So this whole process works together, right? So this electron transport and this oxidation and phosphorylation, these two processes are coupled. These two processes occur simultaneously. These two processes occur at one time. At the time the uh, oxygen is converted into water, like it accepts the electrons, at the mean time this ADP is converted into ADP. These two processes are coupled, these two processes occur simultaneously. That if this process, the electron transport chain does not work or if it stops, then what will happen? There will be no synthesis of ATP. This, this ATP synthesis will also not take place. And if there is not, if this ADP is not present, then also it can affect the process of the oxidation. The oxidation process will also get affected. Now let's see for the overall. Um, so in this lecture, we are going to uh, learn about the uh, structure of the ATP synthase. Okay, now let's see about the structure of the ATP synthase, and then in the le next lecture, we will learn about the uh, mechanism, like how this ATP synthase uh, works, how the uh, this ATP synthase uh,
profit takes this for the synthesis of the ATP, right? So this ATP synthase is also known as rotary motor, uh, motor model for ATP generation. It's also known as rotary motor model. So why it is known as motor and why it is known as rotary? This uh, the ATP synthase, the structure of the ATP synthase, it has two main components. Okay, so two main parts are there. It has FO subunit. This ATP synthase has two main parts. FO subunit, it is divided into two parts, FO unit and F1 subunit. Right, so this ATP synthase has FA two main subunits, right? F naught subunit and F1 subunit, right? So F naught subunit is further consists of two parts, it has A part and C part. And F1 it consists of gamma, and gamma is surrounded by three alpha and three beta units, right? So is, there are six units that are surrounded by this gamma subunit, right? Okay, let's see in the this diagram that this is the structure of the ATP synthase, it consists of two parts. There is FO subunit, right? This is the FO subunit and there is the F1 subunit, right? This FO subunit is embedded in the inter, in the inner mitochondrial membrane, right? This FO, this, uh, we say that this uh, ATP synthase complex 5 is present inside the inner mitochondrial membrane, right? But when it is present inside the inner mitochondrial membrane, only this FO part is present inside the inner mitochondrial membrane. While this F1 part is protruding, right? It's protruding inside the inner mitochondrial matrix, right? This this F1 part is present inside the matrix. Only this FO part is embedded inside the inner mitochondrial membrane. So this FO subunit, as you can see, uh, it has the A, A part, right? And the C part. So FO subunit has A part and C part, it has two. It, it has further two parts, it's divided into two parts. This A part is stable. This A part is stable, it does not move, right? This C part is basically the rot uh, rotator, right? It's the rotary motor. It's a, uh, basically the, the, the part that rotates and uh, it, that drives the energy is basically this part. This C part is consists of uh, a different 10 to 14 uh, amino acids, or you can say polypeptide chain. Right, it has different 10 to 14 polypeptide chain. The C unit and this C unit is basically movable, right? The C unit rotates as the proton forms, uh, as, as, uh, as we have seen that is when these protons and these hydrogen ions enter into the uh, matrix. So, this C unit, then what happens that this C unit rotates, right? The C unit uh, basically, uh, specifically has a specific amino acid that has a negative charge as the arginine. Right, arginine when it's, it, it, uh, it has the negative charge and has the positive charge, then it, it carries this charge and then it causes the repulsion and the, the rotation occurs in this C part. Right, and then uh, the F1 subunit it has the three components, three main components, three main units is the gamma surrounded by three alpha and three beta subunits. Right, and this F1 subunit and this F4 subunit are connected together to a stock. Right, there is a star that's composed of the gamma and epsilon. So, star is the gamma and the epsilon that connects this uh, FO subunit to the F1 subunit. Right, so this ATP in this ATP synthase, FO subunit and F1 subunit are connected to each other through this uh, B subunit, right? Through this A, you can say that through this A subunit and then through gamma uh, and through this, uh, through this star, they are connected to each other. Right, so this is the uh, overall rotary model, overall structure for the uh, ATP synthase. So ATP synthase is also known as FO, uh, sorry, F not F1 complex, right? Or is uh, this ATP synthase is also known as complex five, right? So it has, as I told you, it has the two parts, F not subunit and F1 subunit, right? So in the F not subunit, C is the subunit, right? To which ATP synthase is attached, right? That causes the rotation basically of the um, that's when hydrogen ions enter, it causes the rotation, right? In F1 subunit, it consists of the gamma subunit surrounded by three alpha and three beta subunit, right? And when the proton flows through this ATP synthase, what happens that the gamma subunit basically rotates. When the gamma subunit rotates, it causes the conformational changes. And the beta subunits uh, that leads to the synthesis of the ATP. Right, as shown in this diagram, 
it has to give you that this uh, three unit connects this stock is connected to a stock so you can say that this uh, this fo sub unit is connected to f1 sub unit to this three unit that this unit is connected to the stock and then stock connects this fo sub uh, sorry f not sub unit to this f1 sub unit This ATP synthase is also known as rotatory motor model for ATP generation, right? So this is that's why it is known as rotatory motor model. That is the complex type. It is present along with the electron transport chain. So that's why the whole process is known as oxidative phosphorylation because the oxidation occurs by the electron transport chain, and this complex type is involved in the phosphorylation of ADP together with inorganic phosphate, adenine diphosphate, together with one phosphate, it will form the formation of the ATP, right? So uh, the ATP synthase consists of two parts, right? It has the F0 motor, that's the F0 part subunit and the F1 subunit. So this, uh, the F0 subunit is present inside the inner mitochondrial membrane. And this F1 subunit is protruding inside the matrix. So this F0 subunit is the rotatory, uh, is the rotatory part, right? It's a rotor, that it rotates. When the hydrogen ions enter into this, into this C part, right? As a, uh, um, we have said that F naught it has the two parts. This is the C part, and this and this one is the uh, A part, right? So A part is the stable, right? Is the stable, while all the rotation is caused by this C part. When the protons are entering into the matrix to this C part, right? There is a half pathway, right? There is a half uh, shuttle pathway to this. C part of it, right? When these photons are entering into the matrix, what will happen? It will cause the rotation. Like it, it is having, as you can see, it has the partition. The C part has the partition. It consists of the 10 to 14 polypeptide chains, right? It's made up of 10 to 14 polypeptide chains. Then each having the uh, one of the uh, negative or minus it, like it will accept this hydrogen and causes the rotation. And these photons then are um, transferred to the matrix. So the energy. Uh, uh, that is the, the energy that is gained through the electron transport chain is then coupled, is then taken up by this machine, right? This motor. Then it will cause the rotation, and then these photons will enter into the. So for these, when these photons are entering into the matrix, it causes the rotation of this C part. When this C part causes the rotation, what will happen? That this stock, that is the gamma part, the F1 part, right? It was connected to this C unit. When the rotation is caused in this part, automatically the rotation is caused in this rotor, right? In this gamma part, right? This gamma as uh, the F1 part is something. This is the F1 part. This is the F1 part. Uh, basically, is the catalytic part, right? In this F1 part, the ATP synthesis takes place. This part, F1 part, is also known as the catalytic, or the catalysis occurs in this part. That the in, um, in, in this part, basically, the ADP is converted into the ATP, right? So what will happen that when this C part rotates, this gamma parts also rotate, and by this rotation, um, by rotation of this gamma part, the ATP and the inorganic you know, phosphate will be converted into the ATP, there will be the formation of the ATP. So overall, this is the structure of the uh, ATP synthase or the complex type, also known as rotary motor model. That's why it is also known as the uh, this is the world's smallest molecular motor, right? Okay, and the, uh, all the parts as the FO part uh, consists of the C part and the A part, and the F1 part consists of the gamma, and the gamma is surrounded by the three alpha and three beta subunit, right? Uh, among these three alpha and three beta subunit, basically the ATP synthesis occurs by the beta subunit, right? Not the A subunit. A subunit contains the ATP and that will remain present in the A subunit. But in, from the B subunit, ATP synthesis takes place. In the next lecture, we will study in detail about this F1 part, basically because this F1 part is involved in the formation of the ATP. That's how these alpha and beta subunits and this gamma subunit is involved in the synthesis of the ATP, how the ATP synthesis occurs by this F1 subunit.